Uh, in this part of the video, I'd like to look at the second part of the lesson, which is looking at the chain rule and applying it to real examples. Now, um, something that's quite important comes up, they, they like this sort of question, they really do. But they're looking at trying to apply the chain rule. So, so far we've spoken about the chain rule, we understand what's involved. We've looked at the product rule and the quotient rule, which have often both included the chain rule in some shape or form. Um, we've also now looked a little bit at how we can reverse the chain rule, how we can take something that involved these sort of multiple stages to kind of pull together, but then we go backwards as well, and we've got some approaches to do that. We saw some sort of connections between things and work things out fairly intuitively. I'd like to continue with the kind of theme of the chain rule, but its application to, um, to I suppose, real life situations. Typically, this is called rate of change. So if it was given a heading or sort, so that was typically where you would find these kinds of questions. Um, and it involves, obviously, the chain rule. So when I look at these types of questions, they can sometimes be a little bit intimidating because you kind of, especially become quite wordy, is to ask yourself, well, uh, how do I take this paragraph and turn it into something more meaningful? Uh, and I think it's important to, to look for words like rate, because rate, in, in, in terms of differentiation terms, well, that's, that's what dy dx is. That's what gradient is. It's the rate at which something is changing. So if I speak to you very simplistically about the gradient of a straight line, a gradient of 2 versus a gradient of 5, but a gradient of 5 is steeper than a gradient of 2, so the cha whatever's changing is changing more rapidly with a gradient of 5 versus a gradient of 2. Uh, and so that gradient, that piece of information, is not just telling us how steep something is, but at what rate it is changing over time. And so what I suppose we need to try and do here is sort of figure out the theme of the question. So that's what I tend to do. I tend to ask myself, what is the theme of this question? What is, it, what is, it, what is this kind of centred around? So typically, the question might be saying something like, uh, the, the, the volume at which this spherical shape is changing, well then we've got an immediate thing in our minds. We're dealing with volume, and we're dealing with a shape that's a sphere. So that's usually a very really good starting point because it can give us some really important information. The important things here are the fact that this, whatever we're dealing with in this kind of oil flick is that it's circular. So that kind of information is important when answering a question like this. So before I even start, I ask myself, what is the theme of this question? Are we talking area? Are we talking volume? Are we talking perimeter or circumference? What's going on? And, and what kind of formulas are associated with those kinds of shapes? So if it was about, I don't know, the volume of a balloon that happened to be remarkably spherical, uh, or an oil slick which is remarkably circular, which is highly unlikely in real life, but I suppose we can model things and say, well, I anticipate it's going to take a kind of circular shape, and so I can kind of get an idea of the kinds of things that might happen. It might not be 100% accurate, but it gives me a pretty good indicator at how that particular shape is likely to change over a period of time. Does that make sense? Okay, so the key really to this is what theme is the one here? Well, it's clearly a circle. And also, more specifically in A, area. So those two words jump out at me. I know that a good starting point for me would be to look at those aspects. And I also know that if I'm dealing with a circle, I'm dealing with the area of a circle being pi r squared. So if I can differentiate this, let's do that. So if I found the change in A in with respect to R, because pi obviously is a constant, yes, is going to be what? What's D A D R going to be? 2 pi r. So that's a good starting point. I, because I know that the type of question this is, when rates of change, that the chain rule is going to play a role. I always try and see what the derivative of something would look like. Okay, so if I'm dealing with a circle and its area, well that seems like a logical place to start, but let's also consider what that derivative would look like. So that could prove useful later on. So, 
Do we know anything else at this stage about this? Well, um, we know that R is 20. So that's quite useful. So I suppose I need to ask myself, well, what is the main goal of this question? Well, it's looking at the rate at which area is changing. So if I look at that in terms of the change of the area over time, because that would make the most sense to me. What's happening over a period of time? So how is the area changing over time? Well, I could use the train rule and say, well, I know what... I could have DADR here. I've already found that one out. Yes? Well, it would make most sense then in order for this chain to be complete, for this bit to be DRVT. Yes? And do I know the rate at which the radius is changing over time? Yes, 1.5. Yes? The radius of the circle is increasing at a rate of 1.5 meters per second. So the rate over whatever period of time we're dealing with, well, we, are, we now know that DADR is going to be 2 pi r. And we also know that DRDT, the radius changing over time, is 1.5. So that's really useful. We also know that r is 20 in this question. So we're dealing with 40 pi times 1.5. And what information does that give us? Well, it gives us the rate at which the area is changing over time, which is exactly what we've been asked to do. Does that make some sense to you? Okay, so, the first part of this question is specifically about areas, and it's about a shape that is circular. So I always look at that context and think, this is going to involve the area of a circle. If I differentiated that in terms of A and R, I've got a starting point. I've got something I can look at and say, if I'm going to create a chain, that could be an important part of that chain. And once I've got that, I ask myself, well, what is the goal of the question? What, is it, what am I trying to get? Well, the, chain, the rate at which the area is changing over time, meaning that the missing bit is that one there in my chain. But I'm told what that is. The rate of the radius changes over time is in the first part of the question, and boom, I'm in business. And this will then obviously, I can work out whatever that is. Yes? And that would give me the answer to part A. What I would like you to try is part B on your own. So I'm going to stop for a moment. I will do it on the board, uh, but I want to give you a chance to try it on your own. So in this instance, we've asked ourselves, what is the theme? What is part B's main uh, theme? Well, it's again a circular oil stick. That's the theme of the whole question. And then more specifically in part B, the relationship to the perimeter, which we know is the circumference. So that's a good starting point. The circle circumference is 2 pi r. Let's find out what its derivative is. DCDR will be 2 pi. We want to now create a chain using the information that we have. So we're using effectively the chain rule. Do we know what DCDR is? DCDR is 2 pi. Do we know what the change of R in terms of T is? Well, yes, we're told it's 1.5, the same as in this part of the question here. So quite sim simply, we're getting an answer of 3 pi. So once you've got this one, this one is quite easy, really. Or should have been, to see the connection. So this particular question relied on our understanding of the fact that a circle would have been pi, off two pi, uh, sorry, pi squared or 2 pi R, depending on its area or circumference. Uh, and then creating a chain using the information we've got. Uh, so 60 pi for your first answer, 3 pi for your second answer. What you're going to do now, I'm going to give you a worksheet. There's seven questions on it of a similar nature. Give you a go.